Okay, so the last thing we need to do is we need to prevent this from being just a free floating object and we'll actually give it some sort of uh, metal wire for it to hold it up. So let's just go to the front view and we'll create a cylinder. Actually, you know what we could do? I like to do this a lot while I'm working, is instead of creating something from scratch, if we have a similar object, we can just duplicate it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to duplicate the perch, bring it up, and I'm going to translate it, or I mean uh, rotate it 90 degrees. And let's make this a lot skinnier. So I'm going to constrain that bottom axis and just scale this in like this. And we'll bring it over. And uh, let's preview that. Okay, so it looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to grab the the vertices up here and bring this up to the top of the cage and we'll have it meet up with this one right here maybe what I'll do is uh, Imagine that this is made of wood and this is metal. And what we'll do is um, we'll just make a little fat piece down here at the bottom to imply that it's being held together by gravity. So um, what I did here is I just made a selection of this edge and I used a hotkey that I have, but it's also up here, which is convert to face path. And that just selects all those faces that run along the uh, perpendicular direction of that edge. Okay, so now I'm going to extrude. Oh, and by the way, you see how my camera is doing this funny thing as I get closer and closer? So Maya has this thing built in by default called clipping planes, and it can be very annoying, but it's actually a good thing they exist because um, when you're working in very, very large scenes, you're going to want to have the clipping plane automatically call out things that are too far away. Otherwise, you might find yourself in a situation where there's so much stuff in your scene just going out to infinity that you can't even move any <laughs> your camera at all because it's so heavy that your computer just crashes immediately. So it's kind of a uh, failsafe, but it's also an annoyance when you're working like this. But we can fix it. So if you click on this little camera icon, it's for selecting the camera that you're looking through, and then go to the attribute editor. So if you hit control A, it's going to bring up the attribute editor and you just need to go to this far clip plane and just add a couple, or sorry, not the far clip plane, but in this case the near clip plane. And uh, right now it's set to one unit, but we can change that to 0 0.01 units. And once we do that I can close this out and we can get a lot closer to this object. Eventually though it's going to uh, begin cropping out again. You can see it's cropping right there. But this should be enough for us to work with. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. I'm going to select this edge, convert it to a face path, and then extrude. In this case I'm just going to use this translation handle here. We'll scale that out. Okay, so just like before, I want to make sure I hold down these edges. So I'm going to add uh, edge loops here. If I don't do it, it's going to turn into something like this. You can see what's happening. It's just trying to do what I've done here. It's trying to just average it out. But we don't want that necessarily. So let's go ahead and add one there. Add one here. Hold on that one. Great. And so then it looks more like this. I'm just going to grab these vertices and just scoot this up a little bit. Cool. So that looks pretty good. And now I want to duplicate this and have it over on the other side. Let's get rid of uh, history first. 
and delete history. Okay. But this is kind of tricky. Um, what I could do is I could just duplicate it, right? I could just say Control D and bring it over and just eyeball it and see where it lands. But it's not really a precise way to work, is it? I mean, ideally this should be a, a completely symmetrical model, or I'd like it to be anyway. So how do I make sure that there's just the same amount of space between the uh, the uh, place where this is intersecting and the edge of the perch? Well, what I can do is I can reset the pivot point to the origin of the scene, or the middle point. And uh, I've got a little hotkey for you here somewhere. Or I thought I did. Uh, no matter, we can do it by hand. Oh no, here it is. So I've got this little origin icon here. And if you click on this, it's going to take the origin and or take the pivot and put it at the origin of the scene. And that refers to the very zero 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 point of the scene. So now the pivot's in the middle. What I can do is I can say Control D uh, for duplicate, and then scale this over. Oops. And there's one thing I forgot to do. If you haven't already caught it. I have to freeze the transforms because I already have information here. So let's go ahead and modify freeze transformations. Okay, and now we can do that duplicate. Scale it over and just punch in zero one or negative one. And now it's completely symmetrical. The last thing I need to do, as you already know, is uh, freeze transforms. and fix the normals. Okay, so uh, it's under normals reverse. I actually have a hotkey for this and you'll see me use this from here on out because I do it so often. And uh, I think I have it up here for you too. If I don't, I'm going to have to add it. Now here it is. So this will just quickly flip the normals of your object for you. So I'm just going to grab everything and delete history on it, just to make sure there's no history on anything. And then I want to do a little bit of cleanup on the scene before I finish it. So, unlike the last model, which was just one surface, that was the wine glass, in this model we have over 50 surfaces. Most of them are made up of these bars here. But um, we can't really just finish up the scene like this and call it good. Uh, if you're working in any type of environment where you're collaborating with somebody else, whether it's a professional work environment or if you're working with a friend or a school project or something like this, you're going to realize pretty quickly that it's important to keep everything very organized in your scenes. And part of that organization is done with naming. Naming and grouping, which I'm going to cover briefly now. So what I like to do is name the things that I created. So in this case, this is going to be the base. Or I could call it the bottom or something like that. Uh, these are all the bars. Now, I'm not going to go through, by the way, uh, to name each of these, you just have to double click it. You can also do it up here. Type in whatever you want. I usually like to do it in the outliner. Oops. Um, but as you can see, this is going to take a long time for me to do this. So there is a faster way to do it. And I've got to go into the status line again to do this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the bars in the outliner. So I'm going to select the first one, find the last one, which I know is this PTORUS 51. I'm going to shift select it, so it's going to select everything in between. And then I'm going to go up here and type in bar underscore, and then go to quick rename. So I'm just left mouse buttoning on this thing right here. Oops, oh, I'm sorry. 
Okay, so first you have to go and select quick rename. Then you type in the prefix you'd like. In this case, it's going to be bar underscore. And then once you do that, you hit enter. And Maya will do the rest. It's going to name all of these. Although it named it incorrectly. What's going on here? Hmm. Uh, let's see. I will find out what's going on with this. Okay, so I figured out what I was doing wrong. Um, I was trying to rename everything uh, bar that I'd already renamed, and it didn't like that because, as you remember, you can't have anything that has the same name twice. So I tried happy and it works just fine. So now that I've done that, I can go back in here and type in bar underscore, and I think it actually wants you to start it off with a number. So in this case it'll be 1, and there we go. So now we have bar 1 through bar 51. Oh, and that's right. So the bar, uh, this last bar is not actually the bar at all, but this is the ring on the top. Okay, and then we've got this one, which is the perch. And then we could say uh, perch wire 1. <coughs> and perch wire 2. And so this is just considered good form when you're working. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to group these intelligently. So um, what I'm going to do is make a selection of the bars and the base and I'll shift control select this little top piece up here and do a control G. And what that has done is it creates this little group and everything you had selected is now inside that group. And let's call this one the cage, so you can rename the group. And let's group this perch uh, piece, and we'll call this the perch underscore grp. Let's call this the cage underscore grp. And then we can select the whole thing, and we can group the groups. And we'll just call this the bird cage. And so this is great because now I can quickly select just the perch or just the cage or both at once. And of course I could also expand this and select individual things. So um, last thing I want to do before I finish this is just select everything, delete history again. I'm going to freeze the transformations on everything. Modify freeze transformations. And uh, for the birdcage, I'm going to put the pivot down at the zero point. So that's looking pretty good. Um, yeah, one more thing we'll do real quick. If you, this is just a little bonus thing. If you go to the rendering editors under Window, open up the Hypershade. <coughs> this is going to give you different ways to color your objects in your scene. So we've got, let's create a blend. Just click on this little blend thing here. If you double click it, it brings up this big menu that's got a lot of stuff on it. But really quickly you can select color and just click on the gray box here. It's going to bring up this little color palette. And let's just select maybe like a sort of a dirty or dusty kind of copper color. Yeah, maybe something like that. And let's select the cage group. You could do this to groups or you can do it by individual objects, but let's just grab the whole cage and we're going to right click on that blend we just created and say assign material to selection. And let's create another one. This time we'll do a Lambert. A Lambert is a shader that just has no specularity, whereas a blend is kind of a shiny thing. We'll double click the Lambert and we'll pick a nice wood color for the perch. I'm going to grab the perch, just select it. You could also do it through the outliner. And then we'll right click and say assign material to selection. 
Okay, and we minimize this stuff. Let's get this out of the way. And there we have a pretty nice looking birdcage from, uh, I would say, the uh, first part of the 20th century, or maybe late 1800s. So have fun with that one, and uh, can't wait to see what you create.